A soil mass is composed of small solid particles which we call the soil grains. These soil grains when depositing in a soil mass arranges themselves in a way that some amount of empty space is enclosed between them. We call these spaces voids. Water can flow through these voids. The property of the soil by which it permits the water or any other liquid to flow through it through its voids is called permeability. Permeability is the ease with which water can flow through the soils. If soil consisted of perfectly spherical grains and if those grains are arranged perfectly in a particular fashion throughout the soil mass then properties of soil like permeability will be the same in all the direction and we say that soil is isotropic but in reality soil doesn't consist of perfectly spherical grains nor they are perfectly arranged in a particular fashion they are irregular angular flaky or elongated hence they enclose irregular channels of voids in different directions causing the property of soil different in different directions a material properties of which are dependent on the direction is referred to as an isotropic in an inhomogeneous soil deposit water faces different movement resistances when it moves in different directions as the soil has different types of variations in different directions consequently we observe different values of permeability in different directions isotropic means having identical values of a property in all the directions and n isotropic means different properties in different directions in an earth dam embankment soil has been compacted in layers there is always some difference in permeability in horizontal and vertical directions in such an isotropic soil if these directions are denoted as x and z respectively then we can write the permeability in x direction as kx and permeability in z direction as kz if we are to analyze the fluid flow through this soil let us consider a soil element through which water is percolating for the two dimensional fluid flow through this element the equation of continuity can be written as this if we assume darcy's law is valid which means soil element is fully saturated and flow in the voids is laminar then we can write the velocity of fluid is equal to permeability of the soil element times the hydraulic gradient across this element v equal to k hydraulic gradient across this element is given as this substituting it into the continuity equation and solving it we get this if the soil had been isotropic then its permeability in the x direction and z direction would have been equal and the equation would have become a laplace equation laplace equation describes the loss of energy through the space and in our case that energy is in the form of hydraulic head when we solve a laplace equation we receive two families of curves one set of curves is known as flow lines and other set is equipotential lines once we get these lines we may be able to obtain a graphical solution to the laplace equation and that is called flow net using that flow net we may calculate our desired quantities like seepage through soil but our soil is not isotropic and it is an isotropic if we are somehow 
able to convert this equation into the Laplace equation, we may find the quantity of seepage through the soil of an earth dam with anisotropic properties. So, to bring Laplace equation out of this equation, we have to modify some elements in this equation. Let us divide the whole equation by kz and write this part of the equation as this. Now this equation looks similar to the Laplace equation, only this part is problematic. Now let us use our creativity and out of nowhere this thought comes into our mind that why not write this as xt and when we partially differentiate it with respect to x, magic, we get a problematic term. So let's write this equal to dxt and with it our equation becomes the Laplace equation in xt z plane. This is also a continuity equation for an isotropic soil in a fictitious plane xt z plane. What we did here is we transformed the anisotropic soil medium, medium which has different properties in different directions. We transformed it by a scale transformation in the x direction to obtain isotropic medium which has similar properties in different directions and for which the Laplace equation is valid. We did so as to construct the flow net and find the solutions to our engineering problems in an isotropic soil. Now for this new transform section, we can draw the flow net by following the method of constructing the flow net. As we have transformed this section to isotropic, the flow net for this section will have orthogonal intersections of flow lines and equipotential lines with all its fields being elementary engineering, I mean elementary squares. Consider a flow field in the flow net across which the flow is taking place and let us show it as a normal square for simplicity. The natural flow field is elongated but we have transformed it to a perfect square. For the natural elongated section, the coefficient of permeability in the horizontal direction is kx and in the vertical direction is kz. While in transformed square section, the coefficient of permeability is say k dash in both x and z directions because now the soil is isotropic and it has similar properties in both the directions. Let's say length and height of this elementary square is small b and that of natural flow field is a and b respectively. We know a has been transformed into b. So we can write a as b this way. Because if we remember we transformed the section this way. Since both are same sections, the quantity of water that flows through the section in both the cases must be equal. So we can write quantity of water Q is equal to the permeability of this section in this direction K multiplied by the cross section area A multiplied by the hydraulic gradient across this section I. Permeability in x direction is k dash and kx for the respective sections. Area of the flow is height b and width let's say y. And if the delta h is the head loss across the field, so hydraulic gradient in elementary square is delta h by small b. And in this case delta h by b square root of kx by kz. Solving this, we get the effective coefficient of permeability applicable for our transformed section. Now 
that we have effective permeability of the transformed section. Using the flow net, the seepage quantity Q can be computed from the equation that we have discussed in the flow net video. Though the flow net on the transformed section does not present the correct picture of flow pattern, the true flow net can be drawn by retransforming the section back to its original dimensions. On the natural cross section, the flow net will not be composed of squares because the horizontal dimensions are elongated by the factor square root of kx by kz. Nor will be there orthogonal intersections between the flow lines and the equipotential lines. Elementary engineering is creating diaries that are actually hand and are the best to pen down your brilliant ideas, plan your days, count your blessings, make notes or just doodle. If you like elementary engineering videos, getting one of these from Professor Ostover is the best way to support this channel. You can also support this channel by becoming the member of the channel by joining it here on YouTube or you can also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Spreading a word about elementary engineering will be of great help too. Only your love and support keeps elementary engineering going. Read Flownet in an isotropic size at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. All the links are in the description. Thank you.